how do you evaluate the kink? Or some people call it the bottleneck. So a bottle has a neck where only a certain amount of things can get funneled through it till it gets through the bottom and then you can fill up the bottle. Or if you're pouring the bottle out, right, there's kind of like a funnel and it gets skinnier. I like to think of a kink in a hose. If you're watering the garden or the grass or whatever and you get this knot in the hose, like how annoying is that? What happens to the water? Yeah. So we all have kinks in our processes, our lives, our time, family, whatever is happening in our lives. We got to evaluate and figure out if we can identify what that kink is. We have kinks with our team members. We have kinks with our processes. We have kinks with our money. We have kinks with all the things that we've been talking about this weekend, all the business foundational things, and in our personal life. And the way, we talked about this earlier, but the way you evaluate the kink in the hose is to figure out what is the slowest moving part in your business. A business can only run as fast as its slowest moving part. Sometimes the slowest moving part is you and everybody's just waiting for you to catch up so they can run. You're the leader. Audit the processes in your business and see how much something is being done, how long it takes, and how much it does or does not bring you a return, whether that's saving you time, saving you energy, effort, or saving you money. And then, if you're having a tough time doing that, I talk to my clients all the time and I say, hey, I don't care, just grab a piece of paper, get an Excel sheet, whatever you need to do, I want you to write down everything that you do for the next five days, the next 40 hours. How long did it take you? What did you do? Let's see what's clogging up your time. Let's find and identify the kink in the hose. And then we go through and evaluate. Did this bring you money? Did this save you time? Did this help you with your energy? Did it drain your energy? Did it cost you time? Did it cost you money? What's happening here? Let's try to figure out what the kink is. So as we looked at kind of the North Star and where it is that we're going, and we kind of started auditing our time and trying to figure out, like, where are we stuck? And are the things that we're stuck on that we're stressing out about and that we can't figure out even important? Probably not. Not always. So you're going to track and see where the time is being wasted in your life. Something that I like to do is I create an inbox space for everything. How many things are coming at us all the time, whether it's paperwork, emails, text messages, leads, referrals, what else do we say, Brittany? Social media, DMs, comments, likes, calls, content, paperwork, client requests, issues in your business, messages, creating an inbox for all those things. We want to filter everything that's coming at us into one place that we use every single time. We communicate through. How do we communicate? Slack. That's it. We don't communicate anywhere else. If they text me something, well, this weekend we got off track, but <laughs> group chat started. But we communicate through Slack. That's the place we go because it can be organized and everybody knows you message and you use Slack. Where do we track everything? Monday. One spot, one place. Where is all our documents and drives and all the things? Use Monday. We use Monday a lot. Um, having the, the place where the inbox comes. I have an inbox for paperwork. Everybody knows where paperwork comes in when it's coming in and mail that I need to have. It's not spread all over my desk. It's not a post-it message. Where do the messages go? How do those come in? What are the things that are coming at you that you can create an inbox for? One place for notes. One place for a calendar. One place for meetings. One place. Just decide what it is. It can be whatever you want. But think about when you're auditing your time and the kinks that you might have in your hose, what are the things that are coming at you that slow you down, that distract you, that you have to stop what you're doing and, you know, somebody, does any, oh God, I hope not. Does anybody use those, like, uh, message notes that have, like, the carbon copy? Thank God. You'd be surprised. Yeah, be surprised. It still happens. Like, if that's how you're getting messages... No, right? So how is that going to work for you? And how does your team know how to do that? So what are the inboxes for the things that are coming at you that are going to distract you? Distract you. Something that I did was I did a digital detox. I do not have my phone ring unless it's my husband. I'm on do not disturb from 9 to 5. I don't have text message notifications. I don't have social media notifications. I don't think I have a, a red number over any app in my phone because it's not time. I told you I even had a time today to be emotional. It's like, it's not five o'clock. Okay, so having an inbox for when those things come at you, how do they get filtered out so that you can then pick the time in your calendar that makes the most sense to go in and work the things that are coming into your inbox. Is my life. I brain dump almost every single day. 
How many of you are mothers? A lot of us. Or maybe will be one day, or you have other people that you care for and all the other things that are happening in your life. Does anybody know how heavy the mental load is? Can you even measure it? I feel like it's like a few tons. Yeah, the mental load is what screws us up more than anything. And the only way I can get all the ideas, all the things that are worrying me, all the things I have to do is to dump that out of my brain. And when it gets on paper, it gets out of my mind into another place, I feel lighter. I have clarity. I have focus. All you have to do is pull out a piece of paper and just write. Everything coming into your mind. I've woken up in the middle of the night and been like, I can't fucking sleep. And I just brain dump and then I go right to bed. It's crazy. I promise you it works. So when we're looking at brain dumping, when you brain dump, you can be using brain dump to figure out what your umbrella is, what your goals are, what your values are, what your priorities are. We're going to talk about that. When I brain dump, I ask myself many questions, but the biggest question I ask is, what am I avoiding? Yeah. So the umbrella was the idea that you have this overarching theme for either your life, your week, or like things that you're trying to achieve, priorities, values, your goals in different categories in your life. What does that look like? That kind of umbrella that helps you figure out all the other things that you need to be doing. Yep. Okay. Once you have a brain dump, so what are you avoiding? Because let's be real, that's the mental load. We're avoiding the things. Or we're holding on to them. Like, I literally have to book a dentist appointment for my children for the last seven months. I didn't even schedule it. And it's been right here. Like, I can probably pinpoint with a needle exactly where it sits in my mind every damn time. I'm like, fuck, I gotta do that. I gotta do that. I gotta do that. And that happens. And we're gonna talk about that, obviously. But, like, what are the things that you're avoiding that are clogging up your mind? The kink in your mind, too, that happens that we can't have any other things flow. Crystal was talking about this today. Like, you can't have things flow when you have things stuck in your body, in your mind. Okay? So, what are you avoiding? You're gonna brain dump. And when you brain dump, that's gonna turn into a master to-do list. Where do you brain dump? One place. Now, can you always have a planner or your computer or whatever in front of you? No. But you have a process that if you're going to write on a post-it, it goes in a place, an inbox, where you can get back to it and add it to your master to-do list. So your brain dump needs to be in one place. Well, once you brain dump, you turn it into a master to-do list. Your master to-do list is in one place, okay? Because how many of us have had notebooks upon notebooks upon post-its upon digital things? Oh, I'm in your head, huh? Isn't that weird how I just did that now? I used to use iPhone Notes. I use Notion now. It's just an app, and it's like a software online. It's free that you can use. And I have a section there that's called Quick Note. And I will dump all kinds of stuff in there. And then I go in on Friday at the end of the week and I look at what that is and I will categorize. That's kind of like my quick inbox for notes and things and ideas that I have. And then I filter through and I get the process done of putting it either on my master to-do list or wherever that needs to go. So on your master to-do list, you're then going to filter out and look at it and say, hey, what was on my priority list that's on my master to-do list now? We're going to, again, filter through. Okay? And then when you do that, you're also going to look at, are there current items? Sorry, recurring items. So how many of you have on your to-do list, typically, pick up the kids or take out the trash on Fridays, exercise, meal planning, laundry, me time, self-care routine, wash my face, <laughs> whatever it looks like, get my nails done, get my hair done. So you're going to be looking at your to-dos and saying, are there the things that are coming on my list that are constantly needing to be done? And I'm thinking about them over and over and over again. When you're brain dumping. If you brain dump and you keep writing down, got to get quotes, it's probably because you don't have process. And it's probably because you don't have it scheduled. And it's probably because you're not actually taking action and you're avoiding it. So take a look and filter through your priorities and what are things that are happening recurringly that's gonna turn it into something called routines. And I use routines in the context of time, but it's really a process that just happens over and over again. Step-by-step -step process that you need to complete. We're gonna turn those into routines. You're gonna also filter through your priorities and you're gonna see which ones are routine and recurring where you need to take them off your master to-do list and you need to create a routine for it and you need to put it in your calendar, which we're gonna talk about in a second. 
your master to-do list needs to be a running to-do list of things that are not going to be routines that are going to be recurring. Then you're going to look at them and back them into categories. So there are things that I have to do with my children that are need to get done, and that's a category. It can be whatever category you need it to be. It might be things that you have to do in your home. It might be things you have to do on your computer. It might be phone calls you need to make. Maybe you have like 10 people on your master to-do list that you need to call back. Calls, category. Make sense? You guys still with me? So like if you have a therapy appointment every week and like call a therapist on, that's a routine. That's something that happens every single week, let's say. Okay, so we talked about filtering that through your goals, habits, routines that you have. This is where we start putting it into your time. Do you see how just having a calendar is not going to be efficient and you're not going to use it productively if you don't go through these steps? And how all the stuff's just being held in your brain if you don't do this step? And then where do you put it so you can go back and reference it to start getting stuff done? And stop clogging your to-do list with the shit you do every single day anyway? And stop thinking about it because we have a routine, we have a process of time that we do that and when we show up to that time, we... So what does this look like? Again, in the context of time. Let's talk about routines really quick. Routines need to have a process in place if you're doing this all the time. And eventually, you're not going to need a checklist. You're not going to need to flow. But what I do is I open Google Calendar. And we'll talk about the different things. I open Google Calendar. I put in what it is. I put it on the same time, same day, every week or every month, depending on how often I need to do it. And in the notes section, I have a checklist of what I got to get done. So I look at my calendar that day or the day before when I'm resetting, and I say, okay, I have this to do tomorrow. And I open my calendar wherever I'm at, and I say, okay, just follow the steps. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to get prepared mentally and like, oh, let me write on a Post-it now. I have five things I got to do with this checklist. I do this thing all the time. And eventually, as you do that, you're not going to need to do that anymore. I know when my Money Monday is. Right now, it's Tuesdays at 3 when it used to be on Monday. <laughs> but I had to make an adjustment because of something that um, – I'm doing with my children. I made that choice. Values, priorities. Okay. So I know when those things are, and I know exactly what the checklist of Money Monday and what that looks like for me. So you're going to do that with your routines. Then you're going to look at your master to-do list again. So then what you're going to do when you have pockets of time, and we're going to talk about calendar, but you're going to go back to your master to-do list and see the things that you need to get done. We're going to talk about your top three and all the stuff and exactly how I take all the things on my to-do list and I put them into my calendar so that I can show up on that day and get stuff done and not get distracted by a call and not get distracted by other things. This is me as the leader and the CEO of the business. Not everybody cannot get distracted by certain things, but you're going to want a priority list to decide, is it something that's worth my time and my energy and my distraction? Is this something I can delegate? Is this something that's somebody else's task? When I start thinking about my time and planning it into a calendar system, this is what we're going to be talking about. How many of you use a digital calendar system? How many of you use paper? How many of you use both? How many of you don't have one at all? I take a look at it annually, monthly, weekly, and daily. This is my process for time and how I schedule my time. Annual, like I said, I do July because I need to look at my kids' schedule. I need to see when they're out of school. And I want to plan and block things off a year in advance if I can so that I don't show up to school in the parking lot. So I'm like, what the fuck? Did that ever happen to you? <laughs> Why isn't anyone here? Do they not have school today? Wait, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I have 10 appointments. I don't know. Yeah, happens to me all the time. Or if you want to plan vacations or trips or different things, like will you be available or not? Things come up. Holidays, trips, events, birthdays, all of that goes in my planner at the beginning of the year in July. And then I check in with it again in January. So those are the things you're going to want to be looking at when it comes to annual. Then you have monthly. I plan out monthly my appointments, my recurring things that need to happen every single month. And I have that in my digital planner, but I will look at my planner based off annual. And the annual is going to tell me the things that are in my monthly calendar. And as future planning happens, I put things in my monthly. And then I look at my week before the week starts. And I say, hey, what's on my monthly? Let me put in my weekly. And then I look at my weekly when the day comes. And I say, I need to make a plan for the day. And that's how it trickles out. OK? Some of you can't right now think about looking into the future all the way through the rest of the year. But you can do a monthly spread of what's happening coming up in the next month. So if a year sounds overwhelming, start with a month. And as you get better at doing the month and looking at the week and the day, you'll be able to start future planning. It gets a lot easier. When I do that, I take a look at my routines and I already plug them in because I know when those are happening. I decide when's my best flow or when's the best day of the week for me to do laundry. 
I have things that I have to get done based off my priorities, based off my reoccurring, my routines. When do they need to get done? Every day, every week, every month, every quarter, every year. And how do I plan that in? And how do I put that in my calendar already so it's blocked off? This is what time blocking is about. First, you got to start with the non-negotiables, the routines, the things that are time specific and the things that are recurring in your routine. So we're looking at non-negotiables, things that are based off my priorities, things that are based off my values, things that I'm not going to not spend time on because they're important to me, things that are time specific. You have appointments, you have people you have to see, there's birthdays, there's events, things on your calendar that have to happen at a specific time. And then what are the things that are recurring and routine that happen in your life? So here's what I do. I do have a paper planner. I am a pen to paper person. I literally put a whiteboard up here. I like to write things out. I'm visual and I have a visual memory and I'm also a kinesthetic learner, which means you have to learn by doing and it's just always worked for me. Like that's how I ace test. I would cram the night before. I literally wrote this out just now. Um, but paper planning is where I do my brain dumps and my brain just dumps on a piece of paper. Then I transfer that stuff into a master to-do list because I carry my planner everywhere. My master to-do list is on digital. It is a duplication. I do it twice. But what happens for me is that even when I don't go to my to-do list and see what I have to get done, things start to get done because I wrote it down and I also put it digital and it's just ingrained in my mind that I have these things I have to do. That works for me. If I could just go digital, that's what I would do. If I'm being honest, but I like the physical writing out. It's a creative outlet for me. It just makes me feel better. Also, I do future planning. So we have a section in Notion where we talk about future projects that we want to do for our business or things that I want to do in my home or like repairs that need to be done or things that I want to do for myself. Like in the future, I want to lose 10 more pounds. So whatever that looks like, future planning, it's not something I have to do right now, but I have it out on this. How many of you spend time using your main mental capacity to think about future things? That you're like, God, I really want to do that one day. And I keep, it keeps coming back, all that. Put it in your future planning, get it out of your head, you know that it's there. So when things, not necessarily calm down, because that doesn't always happen, but when you have more clarity and focus and your time is controlled, you're like, hey, you know, in June, it's a little bit slower in my business and I have some time. I can go to my future planning and I can say, I have some time where I can plug this in. And then you know it's in June and you're not thinking about it in January because you've got to be thinking about what's happening on your to-do list for January. Okay? The next thing that happens is also projects. So future planning, things that have to happen in the future, and then projects. On my digital planner, it's my one space, all the things that I have, my one space where everything goes because my phone is always with me. I have my appointments, times, and things that need to happen specifically. I use Calendly. I send out my calendar link all the time to clients, um, people, whatever that looks like. And so they get to look at my calendar and they can pick the time that works for them and they know that time works for me because everything else is blocked. My Monday Mondays are blocked. Workouts can be blocked. Picking up my kids are blocked. Making dinner times blocked. Whatever that looks like. So super easy. And I future plan that. If it's recurring things, it's on every single time it needs to happen. So my clients can come in and they can pick time that works for them and I already know that I'm available. So that goes on to, I use Google Calendar, my non-negotiables go in there, my routines and recurring time. So what happens now is, give this a second, yep. So what happens now is I have this master to-do list of shit and I have all these recurring routines and I have a calendar. When do I actually get the to-do things done? Well, that happens is every single Sunday, the last Sunday of the month, I look at what's on my calendar for the month all the appointments I have, events, non-negotiables, routines, all that stuff. And then I take a look at my master to-do list and I say, what stuff can I plug into the times that I'm open? And then every Sunday, 10, 15 minutes, it might take you a little longer when you first start doing this, I also do a reset and I said, what's coming up for the week? And then every day at the end of the day, five minutes, I just take a look at what's happening tomorrow. Last Sunday of the month probably takes me about 30 minutes. Sunday takes me about 15, and then every day takes me about five minutes. Okay, So I have pockets of time of things that I either want to time block and tackle things on my to-do list based on batched categories because I don't want to be making calls in the office and then doing laundry and like, right, they don't go together. It's not going to make sense. There's no flow. When One of the things I will say, when you start being in control of your time and staying organized and seeing how much you can get done, how many of you, once you had children, you're like, what the hell did I do before kids? 
like, what did I do? How do I do everything that I'm doing now? Because when I was 21, I don't know what I did because I could literally, like, I don't know. It just doesn't make any sense. So it's still, we had this still amount of time. What about the people that you see doing the things that you want to be doing and you're like, I love the same 24 hours. I don't know how they do it and why I was talking about some of the things that I was talking about. This is how they control their time. They get disciplined with their time. There are going to be other things in your life that you can't be disciplined about. This is the only thing you cannot change. Like, I don't know how, how I can drill into your mind more and more and more that time is the only thing you're not getting back. You cannot buy more time. Okay? So get disciplined with this. It will change your life. I love checking with my calendar. I love using this stuff because I know that I can get a two-hour massage on Tuesday night if I want to or go for a walk or have coffee with my friend or make that time because it's a non-negotiable for me because I can make sure I get everything else done otherwise. And then I get to go to the massage and I don't have to think about my master to-do list and my mental load because it's already future planned or already in my planner. Like I can completely be clear. So these are the things that it's like, the shit's not hitting the fan right now, but we're trying to stay in control of what we can stay in control of. And this is just how I do it. And I know this seems like so many steps. We're gonna, let's review really quick. We have this umbrella like theme every now and then we can take a look at it and make sure it's still working for us. But that's like once a year. Maybe it's once every five years. It might not change. Maybe it's once a month right now because you're still getting aware of who you are, figuring out what's working for you. It's not going to be that way forever. Just like once you create processes, you're not going to be creating processes forever. You might refine some things and they don't have to worry about it anymore. Lorraine just asked me, she's like, do you have a process for this? I'm like, I'm sure we do. I don't know what the fuck it is. <sighs> like in our agency. I'm like, they took over years ago. I don't, I don't know if we do. But that's how, that's what happens. I created the processes originally. I made the office Bible. I put the dividers in. I labeled them, printed the paper, hole punched. Like, here's your office Bible. Please read it. <laughs> right? Like, I did that. That's what I was doing in the beginning. And today, I couldn't tell you how to quote or answer the phone or any of that stuff. And I'm not joking when I say that. Like, I don't. I don't need to. But this stuff doesn't need to happen all the time. The brain jumping and working with these two type of documents or these type of um, activities I mean, you're alive. You're going to need, things are going to always happen. It's going to help organize your mind. And then it helps you show up so you can be clear and do the things you have to do. So that's really what it is. It's brain jumping, master to-do list. Brain jumping, master to-do list. And then putting it in your calendar so you get it done. And then just resetting. What does that annual view look like? So my kids are out of school during Christmas break. Are there things I can be doing that time? Should I be scheduling my vacations with them or what can I do do I want to take all that time off do I want to get a nanny do I want to put them in some type of camp do I want to what do you want to do but if you don't have that plan and you don't know you're going to show up to school again and no one's going to be there <laughs> like I said right like what do you do then so um you'll do annual view go to monthly view weekly view daily view we were talking about that the other thing is, is when you're first starting out on this you want to do a midday check-in because if you are not taking a look at your calendar in the morning, you'll be like, okay, I have my top three and I have these appointments. There's been many times where I just get in the zone doing something and I'm like, crap, I missed that meeting. I was supposed to call that person at this time. Like, it happens. So doing a midday, but as I've gotten more disciplined, like it's in front of me, I have like my system, I, it kind of is like a muscle and gets automatic. Use that. If you don't use your calendar or you don't use these things, you're going to get fuzzy. You have to check in with it and you have to stay in control with it. Because the longer we don't see something or hear something or do something, our memories start to fade and things get fuzzy. We don't have that clarity. This is what it's meant to do for you. Okay. So what I do when I'm doing my resets, I take a look at picking my top three things. Every month I have top three things I want to focus on. I pick a focus. And that comes off of this. It comes off of my master to-do list. It comes off of anything that's future planning. And it comes off of any projects I have. I also have top three a week. I look at my top three for the month. I pick top three for the week that I'm going to do to help get to the top three completed. And then I have top three for the day, every single day. So it starts with what are my top three monthly? What are the top three this week I can do to get to my top three monthly? And what are my top three every single day to complete my top three this week, to complete my top three this month? More than three focuses a month, which sometimes not everybody can even do that. And sometimes you might not have three. But I can handle it because I've been doing it for a while. That's how you chip away. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So th this is how it happens. Like there is no way you're going to create massive amounts of production of activities and complete things if you aren't controlling every single day of your life. It's just not. And if you don't control your day, what's your day going to do? Control you. This is 
basic, but I'm giving you my system. This works for me. It might not work for you completely, but here it is. Give it a try. Start working on these things. So what happens when overwhelm happens? Oh, no, it happens to me too. When I start feeling overwhelmed or something becomes a kink in my life, we're going to talk about it on a grander scheme, and then we'll talk about it more like macro, and then we'll go a little bit more micro. But when I feel overwhelmed and it's like a day after day after day thing, it's like this is a phase right now in my life, I go back to a reset, and I go back to a brain dump, and I go back up here, and I'm like, what are my priorities? What are my values? What am I doing? I go back to a brain dump, like just get it out, whatever it is. I don't care. Just make a list. I take a look at, is this recurring? Do I already have it calendar? Do I already have it in my, you know, plan? If so, don't think about it anymore. Let it go. Because when that time comes, you're going to show up. Or is this something that needs to get done? When you're going through your master to-do list and finding pockets of time in your calendar to put stuff in that you need to do, or your top threes or whatever that might look like, obviously have it filter through your priorities and say, is there a deadline? Do I need to get this done by a certain time? Is this urgent right now? Is this going to impact my life? If I get this done at a high level or a low level, how much time is it going to take? You have to make those adjustments and, and think about those things, obviously, so that you can time block. But I have everything scheduled out, and I get to look at what periods of time that I have that I can start tackling the other things. As long as they're based off my priorities and values, you'll be good. But there are times where I'm overwhelmed, like things are just piling on, other shit's happening that I can't control, and I just go back and I do this process again, and it makes me feel better. It gets it out of my mind. It gives me the space to create the time that I might need to create to get those things done. So that's kind of like on a macro level, I would say. I also take time to pause. I talked about this before, but there's so much power in pausing and getting quiet, separating yourself. Every time I've done this, even when it's chaos, like it feels like the whole world is on fire right now, I have come back and been able to take action, 10x my results, 10x whatever it is that I wanted to. If I would have just kept going through the fire, I would have just gotten burned. But if I can take a step back and go get the fire extinguisher or get some energy back so I can go fight the fire, that's what I do. I take time to pause. And I also have that as my non-negotiable for like me time, self-care, whatever you want to call it. But being able to restore some of that energy. You have two activities. It's either going to be energy giving or energy absorbing. That's it. <laughs> that's you either. And unfortunately, us women like to give a lot of energy we feel like we have to, and we don't always give ourselves permission to get energy back. But that's things that I do when I'm overwhelmed. I come back to this process, which usually is enough, and it just gives me that clarity. Or I know I need to step back a little bit further and just take a time to pause. And I let the shit burn. And I've never had it burn so bad that I was like, you know, like it was that bad. I, I'm so blessed in that sense. But there are things that are going to happen in your life that you don't have control over. And you go back to figuring out what do I have control over and what can I do. And I'm telling you, it brings you peace. It really does. Just try it. You'll see. Sometimes it's as simple as doing an audit. Find the kink in the hose again. Just go back through the cycle. So what do I do when the kids are sick? Well, now my supposedly my son's sick this week. So good thing I don't have any appointments. But I cancel appointments. I go back to my priority. And like I said, like... If you can make adjustments, if you can find people, you don't need to justify, you don't need to explain, you just got to do what's good for you. You're going to choose you as a priority, then I'm going to choose my marriage, and then I'm going to choose my kids. Knowing those things is the filter. And most of the time, it's okay. We're just putting pressure on ourselves. We are so much worse and harder on ourselves than anybody else is. And if you really think about what am I talking about in the context of my life, like, is it really this important that I had to reschedule a meeting? Probably not. I mean, you get it. If you get into a car accident, hopefully you're fine. But, like, let's say now you have to go to get, um, you know, file the claim. And you got to go to the body shop and make sure. you got to get the towing. And I don't have a car for the week. And I'll literally pull out a piece of paper and write a list. What do I got to do? What do I have to get done? What do I have for this week? What do I have for the rest of the day? And just start figuring out how you can problem solve whatever you have in that moment. But I can do that so easily because I'm like, what is for the rest of my day? I know. I have it organized. I'm in control. And I can solve problems so much faster because of that. Sit in your car after you're waiting. Like, when you're waiting for the towing. Like, my priority is my health. My priority is my family. My priority is me. Thank God I have my limbs still. Whatever that, you know, like, what does that look like? It's going to bring you back self to yourself, back home, and put everything back into perspective. And you realize that you can still get all the stuff done. And then, of course, obviously, like, 
some of this stuff is the things that you're avoiding and then you can't really do anything about it. But when you're able to do this, you're going to see that you can get so much more done than you were doing before. And you're going to have that clarity and that time that suddenly you're going to say, oh, well, I don't know why we're talking about car accidents, dang it. Some of the insurance agents in here. Um, oh, shoot, the cleaning lady to come. That's worse than an accident for me, okay? I'm like, fuck, is she serious right now? Like, now I got to, no, it's the worst. Yeah, the cleaning ladies are coming. Now I got to go clean that whole dang house. Well, no, do I really need to clean the whole house? I don't. Maybe I'll just shut the doors and not look at it because I have other priorities, which is very hard for me. Um, maybe I can say, I'll pull out a piece of paper and look at my calendar and I'll say, okay, I have an hour here, an hour here, an hour here this week. So I'm going to do downstairs, upstairs. Boom. It's out of my mind. It is what it is. I can't control the rest of it. And it just, it just flows so much better. Okay. So that's what you do. I, one, I would say if you have some type of person or place that you can go as a sounding board, sometimes you just have to hear things out loud and the person didn't even say anything. You're like, okay, I got it. I'm good. Sometimes that, that's what it is. If it's me having to show up to do a task that I know I need to do and I'm stuck, it's because I haven't created a process or figured out, like, what's the next, next task or the next thing I need to do. And I might not know that. So then I go do some research and I figure out what that process might need to look at. And then I just start taking action so that I don't get stuck on the next thing. I would say that's the thing that gets me stuck the most if it's not... I have not done a brain dump in a while and I'm thinking about a million other things and now I got to do this thing on my calendar. And also I will say, so this has been a journey of mine for three years to kind of perfect what works for me. You will start this and you will start seeing what flows right for you. What is the best time for you to do the nitty gritty computer type stuff during the day? I also do something called cycle syncing. I have a podcast about this. So for those of you that have a cycle, <laughs> um, I use my cycle to help me because you actually have periods of time throughout the month in your cycle where you're more creative this week, where you might be ovulating and so you're more friendly and outgoing when you should be scheduling major appointments or going to events or doing things that are more social. Or right before your men menstrual cycle starts, you are really analytical and it's a great time to review your numbers, like different things like that. You will figure out what flows right for you and this will happen less for you where you're getting stuck. But if it's new and I just don't know, I'll just soundboard, research, post it, party. It's really kind of a guided brain dump. And then just go through it again. It has to get scheduled. And it doesn't mean that I don't end the day and I'm like, crap, I didn't do my top three. Now I gotta move it to the next day. And it, it almost feels like it's screwing up everything else you planned. That happens to me all the time. These things have to be flexible even though you're trying to be structured, like give yourself grace, see what's working. If you stay disciplined in doing this, it's going to work better than whatever's working for you, not working for you now. You got to, I, I know it's hard for you to now, I know your situation. So you're over planning and over committing to things. You have to give yourself some buffer time. Okay. Here's an example. Okay. Here's an example. How many of you cook Thanksgiving dinner? How many of you are like, okay, this is how much time it's going to take me. And how many of you are still cooking, like, right before people show up? But it literally never takes what I thought it was going to take. I am underestimating how much time something might take. So your routine stuff, you should know. And as you're doing your routine stuff more often, they're gonna, you're going to get faster at it. And you're going to find ways to be better at it. But you're probably overcommitting yourself. You leave some buffer time if you can. So that's It would help. Last one, because we got to keep going. Yeah. Unfortunately, you have other shit you got to do, so I get it. So what time do you have that you can spare to maybe say, okay, for the next four weeks, so we're kind of breaking it down and we're saying, I got, you know, chip it away. Say every Monday at 1 p.m., from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., give yourself a lot of time. Give yourself a whole hour and just start going through this process. And as you're brain dumping, maybe do like a post-it party and just start putting post-its on the wall of things that you're thinking about. And just make it massive, even though my brain dumps are typically like I just brain dumped and now I'm inputting into a master to-do list. But I would start with the umbrella stuff and thinking about really like who do you want to be? How do you want to show up? How much time do you actually have? And then I would schedule time to work on the brain dump and figuring those two out. And then you can start on master to-do list and then you can start looking at your weeks and your months and stuff. But it's, it's got to take you as long as it's going to take you. But you schedule it now, Rena, and you show up and you get it done non-negotiable because this will change your life if you actually do it.
Uh, paper planner, I love Happy Planner. The reason I love Happy Planner is because it is a ring-bound planner, which means that you can take papers out and put papers in. I print stuff. Um, but honestly, my favorite planner is the one you're going to use. I don't care. You can print. My, my suggestion is to go on Etsy and just find or Canva or whatever on Google, print out paper and three-hole punch it and put in a binder. Just start using something. Because if you buy this pretty planner and you start, and then you don't use it for a week, you're going to be pissed off at yourself and you're not going to use it. Like, I've done it. And we're like, well, that just went to hell. No. So even just, I actually, I should have put that QR code up. But if you go to my website, there is a freebie to download paper planner that I um, created for myself. And you can print it out and it's front and back. You can print it out, hole punch it, put it in a binder, and just use that for now if you want to, if you're like a paper person. Otherwise, keep it simple, you guys. Just use Google Calendar, iCal, whatever you want to use. Okay? All right. You can still find me. Obviously, I'm still here. Um, I'm so excited about the next person. I just love her. Okay. You ready, Shamani? I'll, I'll take, I'll take right. it away. Give Thank you a round of applause.